Hello friends and welcome back. For this video, I'll be taking a closer look at Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source container cluster orchestration and management toolkit. There are a number of reasons why some of the largest companies are adopting Kubernetes. Among those reasons are a user's ability to schedule, distribute, and scale workloads running in containers. Before we go deeper into the ins and outs of Kubernetes, Let's briefly recap what a container is. A container, like a virtual machine, or a VM, helps us encapsulate our applications and workloads to be self-sufficient. If a task, workload, or service is specific enough, you may be able to replace an existing VM with a container. This will largely be driven by the application's dependencies on resources typically supplied by a full-blown guest operating system. Here's a high-level view of how a container compares to a VM. As you can see, you'd have the familiar hardware platform at your base, which would build through to a host operating system that would house either a hypervisor or a container host like Docker. On the left, we could see the build-out associated with a VM structure, whereby a guest OS would be supplied followed by the necessary libraries to support the application. On the right, there's no need for a guest operating system, as containers would house the necessary libraries for the target application. At the top, we could see a wide variety of vertical markets that either of those two architectures can be used for. Now where Kubernetes comes in is by taking the software encapsulation provided by the container a bit further. It does this by producing a pod which is a collection of one or more containers with a single interface for sharing networking and storage. Above that, replica sets are used to replicate a specific number of copies of a pod and provide the ability to create a recovery source should one pod fail. Kubernetes also leverages labels to manage the services and replication controller used to scale clusters and identify or select the container or pods they manage. Kubernetes runs on almost any platform. It's lightweight, portable, and modular, which is oftentimes suited for cloud-native environments. Here are some examples of the platform supported. Here's a look at the recommended hardware requirements for running Kubernetes. To demonstrate the ease of installation and use, I'll now walk you through getting a system up and running and verifying a successful installation. So let's get started. Here's an overview look at the components that we'll be setting up for our Kubernetes environment in Linux. We'll break our tasks into two parts. The first part will involve installing all of our necessary Docker dependencies for Kubernetes to work with. The second part involves installing Kubernetes dependencies and relative components. Through this process, we'll be installing several components, such as etcd, which is a simple, secure, fast, and reliable distributed key value store, Kubernetes master, which exposes the Kubernetes value tenants like the controller manager, scheduler, and API server, kubelet, which is an agent that runs on each node to monitor the container activity and has the ability to restart them if required to keep replication levels. kubectl, which is used to control the Kubernetes cluster manager and other related components. We'll finish off by listing out the pods that are running on our system. Let's open up our Linux terminal and start the Docker portion. For some of these steps, you'll notice warnings. These are related to already having installed Docker dependencies for other projects on this system. Let's continue through with the Kubernetes portion. As previously stated, this will run through a number of dependencies and steps to set up our environment. Now we'll start our cluster. We can now deploy our pods. At this point, our pods have been deployed to the network, and we can list the pods running.
And there you have it, a quick and easy walkthrough for installing and testing Kubernetes with Docker. As always, I thank you for hanging in there this long. See you again soon.